overlooking the quiet, picturesque beach of Adrossen. A dark shadow hangs over the town. That shadow is Ardrossan Castle. Located on Cannon Hill, the crumbling ruins of the former stronghold lie abandoned like a ghost from the past. Ardrossan Castle was built by Simon de Morville, the Lord of Cunningham, around the year 1140, before being taken under the lordship of Sir Fergus Barclay of the Barclay clan in the early 1200s. The castle has been destroyed and rebuilt several times throughout its history. It was partially destroyed during the Scottish Wars of Independence. In 1357, the castle's ownership moved into the hands of the Eglintons and then the Montgomerys, who rebuilt it after the Barclay clan died off without any heirs. The castle has remained in its current ruined state since 1654, when the forces of Oliver Cromwell and his occupying armies removed stone from the structure in order to build a fort at what is now Air Citadel. The two structures still on the grounds are the remains of what were once the gatehouse entrance and the kitchen vaults. Since the days of Cromwell, the castle has been left looming over the coastline for three centuries. A small church once stood on the grounds of Cannon Hill next to the castle for many centuries before being destroyed in a violent storm in the 1690s. In 1911, the lands of the old church were being excavated by the local council when they unearthed a stone sarcophagus, the lid of which had been slid off. Inside were the remains of leg bones, part of a human skull, and a small piece of leather. There has been lots of speculation as to who was buried in the sarcophagus, ranging from a former Lord of Adrossan, to a French Mason, to even a Knights Templar, as the sword engraved on the lid of the sarcophagus is said to identify the resting place of a Templar. In October 1913, a local spiritualist known only as Mrs Hunter claimed that the coffin had once held the body of an Errol who had gone to Palestine in 1199 and had fought under Richard the Lionheart in the Crusades. After being wounded in battle in 1232, he was captured and held prisoner by the Moors for five years. He later married a Moorish woman before being brought home in 1237 and later buried with all of his effects, including a jewel encrusted sword. These valuables were later stolen when the coffin was broken into over a hundred years later. Mrs Hunter's story has continued to be recounted over the centuries, but of course it's almost impossible to prove its accuracy. Fergus Barclay was the only lord from Ayrshire to have his seal printed on the Declaration of Arbroath. Throughout history, he has been referred to as the Devil of Ardrossan, due to a long-standing legend of his involvement and dealings with the Devil himself. Barclay was a horseman, known locally for his fantastic horse-riding skills. 
Stories spread throughout the land that he had sold his soul to the devil in return for his great gifts and fortune. The secret to his success was said to be a magical bridle or saddle on which he rode. Barclay was later able to trick the devil into being given his soul back and with this the devil attacked Adrossan Castle and is said to have left behind a hoof print on the stones of either the castle or the small church that once stood on the grounds. Barclay's encounters with the devil is the basis of the Ayrshire folk tale The Enchanted Saddle, also known as Barclay's Bridle, which we will explore in a later episode. In one version of the legend, Barclay is said to have been buried on the Isle of Arran in a shroud made of bullhide. On the night of his burial, a great storm disrupted the body and swept it back across the water to Adrossan, finally being laid to rest in the castle's church grounds. It is said that if someone were to take earth from the grave and throw it into the sea, heavy storms and floods would soon follow. Another legend associated with the castle is the story of a Scottish warlock named Michael Scott. The legend claims that Scott was the son of a mermaid and lived in the ruins of the castle for some time. According to some references, Scott is also referred to as the Devil of Ardrossan. Given the similarities between his story and that of Fergus Barclay, it's reasonable to assume that perhaps the stories have become mixed up or assimilated over the centuries. That's one slight problem when dealing with stories this old, retellings often change over time. It's important to note that there was a real supposed sorcerer named Michael Scott, who was born in and around the Scottish borders in the late 12th century, and is actually referenced in the epic poem Dante's Inferno. In another mind-bending example, this Michael Scott is also sometimes confused with being the fictional Michael Scott from the old Adrossan legend. Confused? Me too. Let's move on. William Wallace is known as Scotland's national hero who fought the English armies during the Wars of Independence. Wallace also had quite a big connection to Ayrshire. His connections with Adrossan Castle are recounted in the tale known as Wallace's Larder, which details his surprise attack on the castle during its occupation by English forces. Wallace and his allies set fire to a small number of buildings near the castle, which drew the attention of the English soldiers who left to investigate. They were then set upon by Wallace who led his forces up the hill and slaughtered the remains of the English garrison, throwing the bodies into the castle's keep which became known as Wallace's Larder, and this is where the story gets its name. However, some historians have cast doubt over the accuracy of Wallace's accounts in Ayrshire, but the legends persist nonetheless. It is also said that the ghost of William Wallace himself roams the grounds of the castle on stormy nights. Adrossan Castle has stood in its commanding position over the Firth of Clyde for almost 1,000 years and is one of the oldest castles in Ayrshire and Scotland. The ruins continue to be battered by wind, rain and harsh weather, but fortunately efforts have been made to keep it safe and secure for many more generations to enjoy as a historical relic from Ayrshire's past. 